Good evening, guys, and thank you for tuning in to the Lene Show on this rainy Wednesday where you should be cooped nice and bundled up in your bed with some hot chocolate or something. So if you're tuning in to me today, I really appreciate it and thank you. So today's episode is really going to focus on cheating. It could be about relationships in general, but I am going to focus on the cheating factor. I had a conversation with a coworker today who did disclose to me that her boyfriend um, cheated on her after, I think they were together for about nine years, where, and he cheated on her. And it was just really, it was a really open and raw conversation that we had where she just expressed how she felt after that, you know, feeling unwanted you know, the depression, not eating, and just being so angry and not really understanding um, the reasons, you know, why, of course, because I don't think any of us ever really understand why. I don't know if some of you, but I have been cheated on and I have cheated. I cheated once in my entire adult life. It did happen and I'm not proud of it. And I, I will admit that I was unhappy in the relationship and things weren't really working and and before the cheating even started I definitely tried to see where this could go if it could be fixed and um, the only real regret I have is not sitting down and talking to the person I was with and letting them know that I was at a place where I would cheat and either end the relationship or you know figure out for us to get back to where we started so I can and I would and I wouldn't do it again it's not something that I think is necessary I personally feel like you know if it gets to this point there should be some form of communication it doesn't always happen and I obviously I didn't do that you have to learn as you get older and you realize what's important to you and your integrity is it and is it really worth it but I will say that cheating is not not for everybody, but it's not always planned. You know, to me, it's like the difference between getting charged with premeditated murder and murder. I mean, it's extreme. I'm just using that as an example where, you know, I didn't know I didn't sit back and plot the cheatation. You know, I wasn't sitting there, you know, going through Tinder, swiping, swiping, which some people do, but I'm just using it like swiping, swiping, swiping. Ooh, you, I'm going to meet you. I'm going to develop a relationship, friendship with you and bow. We're going to sleep together, even though I got a whole, you know, person, uh, waiting for me thinking I'm doing good for me personally it wasn't something that I sat there and thought about it wasn't brought up it wasn't uh pushed in my face I wasn't you know nothing like that it really just kind of gradually happened I will say that a friendship was started so um so maybe that is considered because it was a friendship legit friendship though like nothing more they were in a relationship and I was in a relationship so this is where you where I say you know I it wasn't nothing in my head thinking because I'm thinking you know you in something too but and it happened and so I can obviously I can only speak from my point of view but I, my opinion is just that I think majority of people don't go into it thinking oh I'm going to cheat but then you have your assholes men and women because women can be assholes too who just don't give a fuck who cheat because they can maybe they have somebody who sticks around you know or who they really just don't care about but they don't have the balls or the courage to say I don't want this anymore so I'll just keep hurting you but then you stay you know like it, it's kind of like a catch-22 like you're staying so how much is it bothering you but then they're doing it and what kind of person does it make them I'm sure all of you uh read the post that uh what's that rapper oh my goodness let me see if I can look it up quickly on my phone the rapper who's with the Keisha girl uh with the tattoos on his face is he Gucci is that his name Gucci Mane or man I don't even know if that's him is that him Okay, it is. It is Gucci. Okay, um, so I don't know if I remember. If, I'm sure a lot of you know um, that you, um, not you, that he posted how amazing his wife Keisha. I think that's her name. If I'm saying it wrong, please don't come for me. I'm not. I'm not too big on uh, today's uh, hip hop uh, people. I don't. I'm. You know. I'm old school. But anyway. Um, I think her name is Keisha. Uh, he was 
he was pointing out how everybody want to be with someone like him, a Gucci Mane or, you know, whatever, like a T.I. or a Snoop Dogg or whatever. I don't know. A list of, There was a list of people I guess you can compare him to and how everybody want to be with someone like them, but nobody want to be the Keisha, the one who stayed around when he went to jail, the one who stayed around when he cheated, the one who had uh, maybe kids on her. I don't know if he had kids on her, but this does happen because that's what happened to me. Um whatever, you know, the one who, she was up all night waiting for him, all that stuff. And it's just interesting to me that men somehow think that if a woman decided, because this was the decision, and I'm not mad at Keisha, she has, she decided to stay with this man, she decided to stick it out and hope that he would change for the better, and that's fine, that's her prerogative. Um, She's a beautiful woman, and beauty doesn't matter. I'm just saying she's a beautiful woman, I don't know her personally, but she seems like she has a really good head on her shoulder, and she has her own little side business and things like that and all of that is great that this doesn't knock her as a woman or as a person at all but I do kind of have an issue with him making it seem like because she stayed and stuck around and not for like a year or two I mean she stuck around four years uh, with multiple s's okay not just one so the fact that she stuck around made her a better woman than a woman who wouldn't have stayed after the first cheating you know what I'm saying or after the first jail stint or after the first arrest or after the first kid that you had or after the first uh smack and I and I, this is not about uh you know um physical abuse I am just using all of these things as examples and he did not at all indicate that he has physically uh put his hands on her and I don't think he has I haven't heard anything until before anybody tries to come for me for that I'm just using that as an example as part of the reasons why it bothered me that he thought it was okay it's one thing to big up his wife you know my wife is beautiful I did I did my wife dirty I cheated on her I had babies on her I went to jail on her I did drugs on her I've cursed her out I've done whatever the list of things that you've done and this woman stood by stood by you and and held you down and never left you and now you're a different man that's what his post should have been about. It should have been him praising the strength of his woman and the fact that she saw the better person in him. But guess what? Everybody doesn't have to stay to see the better person in you. Because if you want to flip it, I do not think this about her. But let's just keep it real. You wanted to be a rapper. You wanted to get into the music game. You wanted to be famous. And what are the chances? Am I willing to risk you becoming famous and being that? What's that song Um, uh, Beyonce made about? And I'm a, you know, listen, I'm a huge Beyonce fan, but... Um, the song Beyonce made about um, she don't want him, but she not going to let another woman um, uh, get all the, the, the stuff. Ugh, I, see, you know, I can't I'm not going to look nothing else up. But, you know, that song where, you know, she, you bet you got better. You you upgraded yourself and I'm not going to let the woman after me get the better version of you. Why not? Why must I stick around and wait for the better version of you? That don't make no sense. And I am not a less of a woman because I decided to stick around. I mean, or because I decided not to stick around. I don't want to, especially if you got stuff going on like me. I was a teen mom. Can you imagine me? being a teen mom so on top of being uh, being in a relationship with someone who is is not getting their stuff together I'm also a mom and I gotta worry about this kid no like I don't want that and I don't think that there's anything wrong with a woman who decides that I am not going to wait for you to be that better man if you become that better man one day more power to you and I will shake your hand and I will be like I'm so happy for you I'm so proud that you woke up one morning and realized that you grown and you not 10 no more you can't keep making excuses for the dumb shit that you're doing but I don't have to stick around for that so that bothered me but guess what that's a typical man because every man think that he's supposed to get waited on he's supposed to uh you know, he, I'm supposed to stop my life or stop my happiness or, or be unhappy for you because that's what women are here for. We're here to make sure that you're good and we're miserable. 
nope, that's not what we're here for, obviously. And there's nothing wrong with leaving, guys. I just want every male and female, because there are women who are just as grimy as men. I want everyone out there to know that you can leave and it's okay. And don't let your partner make you feel like there is something wrong with leaving. Because guess what? Sometimes it don't get better. Sometimes they don't change. And then you spend 20 years of your life twiddling your thumb, hoping for that change, and it don't happen. So I just want to put that out there, that Gucci man or main, whatever his name is, he's wrong. And I wanted him to have several seats. Anyway, my point is, is that why, what, what makes you guys get to the point of cheating? So for me personally, when I decided, or I, I mean, yeah, I guess I did make a decision, but when I got to the point where I was okay, I guess, with the cheating, um, I was kind of done though. This, so this is where maturity, right? This is where the communication, this is where your integrity comes in. And I knew that m- mentally I was done. Mentally, I was over the relationship and I wanted out, but I didn't have the courage to get out. And the part of me is because emotionally, I was still there. I still loved this person. I still loved their company. I still loved being around them. Um, But then there were times where I really was like, yo... Like you're, you're making me so unhappy. And there for, for the relationship where I cheated, there was no, um, well, you know, there was a little shovation, but there was no like physical, like beat down, smack downs or anything like that. There was nothing extra going on. Just, we weren't getting along. And I didn't like the verbal, like how, how we were in arguments. Like it was very, you know, very hurtful things would be said or very angry and it started pissing me off. And, and then I felt a little used because I was always, you know, giving some a little extra coin or I was doing a lot and I wasn't getting a lot in return. I'm always doing the drive and I'm always doing the pain. I'm, I'm doing a lot. And I just, I was starting to feel like, mm, are you in this? Are you in this because you want me? Cause you love me. Or are you in this? Because right now I'm helping you out. That's kind of where I was at with it. And I just decided, okay, and I definitely from the from the minute it happened, I was like, this this is not me because prior to this, I had never cheated. I wasn't. It wasn't the way I roll. It wasn't something I was okay with, and I felt bad. I felt guilt that I even stayed longer because now I'm feeling guilty, and you still treat me like I'm a piece of crap. And then it still ended bad. Can you believe that? It did not end on a good note. But the bottom line is, is that I came to terms with that. I came to terms with the cheating. I came to terms with that. I was wrong for that. And I should have just expressed how I felt. And I wish, I do wish that things would have ended differently. And even if it would have ended, I would have liked it to end differently. Um, especially because I've been cheated on. So for example, like I said, I was with someone who was, who was cheating on me, who had a baby in this relationship with me that multiple, multiple women, not like one or two, like three, four, maybe even five women. And then on top of that, unfortunately there was a physical abuse. But what I'm saying is, is that I can even ask myself, why did I stay? Why, why am I, why did I give it that amount of time? And I really was hoping that something would change. I'm going to, that, and that's the truth. So I, that's why I'm saying I understand what the Gucci guy is saying because I too had hoped that something would change. My experience and my relationship was different because like I said, as far as I know, there was no abuse in their relationship, but also I don't know if they would keep it real and talk about that. Um, because maybe there was, I mean, he was, you know, um, from what I know is a little bit of a gangster. I'm not saying all gangsters, but I'm just saying like he was in the drug game. He did drugs, you know? Okay. I mean, it, it th- these things kind of go hand in hand together. So even if it's, like I said, a small shove or whatever, you're okay with doing something. And maybe she too, every once in a while, maybe there was a smack up for him for the cheating, for coming home, for the bitch being in the house, for smelling like perfume. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, I, I, I wanted it to work and the fear, the fear of being 
uh, a single mom with two children and not thinking that I could find love, you know, not knowing your worth. And this is where I think this is where cheating starts for men and women. I feel like we don't know our worth because we cheat because we're unhappy, right? We cheat because we're not getting something that we want from our partner. Doesn't mean you don't love them and it doesn't mean they don't love you. Because just love does not mean getting everything you want. I love my children to death. I will take bullets, all kinds of crazy stuff. Obviously, I would die for my child. But I, and I saw this quote somewhere, I want to live for my child. I want my child to see me getting up in the morning and go to work. I mean, if I won lotto, it'd be different. But getting up in the morning and go to work. I want them to see me to have. 